Microsoft released the very ambitious Duo one week ago, and in that time, I've used it as my only phone slash tablet, which, yes, it was really hard for me to give up my iPad for a whole week. So how well did it hold up? Is this just a bunch of cool hardware and terrible software like the internet says? Because the internet's always right, right? Let's find out. It stayed up. And while we're finding out, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Audible. What's up, everyone? I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Okay, so honestly, I did cheat on the using this as my only device a little bit because I'm currently using my iPhone as my teleprompter device right now. That's a duty that it normally does, so small asterisks, the Duo got used for 99% of all the things this week. First off, let's talk about the physical construction of this device. Quick note, this isn't exactly like a foldable phone that you've probably heard so much about. It's really two phones kind of stapled together with a little bit of software trickery, making Android think this is really just one big screen. Yes, it ends up being about as janky as that sounds, but we'll talk more about the software later. The build quality though, the physical construction of this device is amazing. If there's one thing, if you look across the internet, if there's one thing the internet can agree when it comes to this is how good this thing looks and how well it feels in the hand. The thing about it is that having two phones combined into one doesn't exactly sound like it would be as impressive as something like the Galaxy Fold or some other device with continuous screens. I'm not much into the foldable market space, but I actually really like the design aesthetic here. Under the hood, this is rocking a Snapdragon 855 eight core 2.8 gigahertz processor. It has six gigabytes RAM and the model that I purchased has 128 gigabytes of built-in storage with no way to expand that. There's not like an expandable SD card slot here. For displays, these individual screens are 5.6 inch 1800 by 1350 AMOLED displays. It comes equipped with Android 10 and yes, it does have dual SIM functionality depending on your wireless carrier. The biggest shock when it comes to the specs though is the 3,577 milliamp hour battery it doesn't sound like it can give you all day use, but it actually, it works really well. All of these are, they're pretty okay, but not shocking specs. And this device will run you $1,400. Wait, what? Well, okay, Gary, come on. There has to be a typo in there somewhere. There, let's check. How much is this? It costs $1,400? Oh, my full disclosure, my wallet is still angry with me over this, not least of all, we mentioned my wife, Ooh, this thing, $1,400. Okay, back to the physical construction. I can't say enough good things about how this is. It's legitimately awesome, the hardware on display here. The Duo is super thin. I mean, look at that. When it's opened up into like dual screen mode, this might be one of the thinnest electronic devices that I've ever owned. You'd be forgiven for thinking that a device this thin couldn't really work, but darn it, those engineers figured out a way. The entire outside of the device is made almost primarily out of glass. And when I first heard about this, I wasn't exactly thrilled. I'm not the biggest fan of the new trend of glass-based mobile devices. Yes, I include my beloved iPhone in that mix. A big reason for that is I don't trust wireless charging due to having a few real bad experiences where on several occasions, I've set my phone on a wireless charger only to wake up that it just didn't work. Wireless charging overnight just straight up didn't work. And that has really messed me over on professional, not YouTube work assignments. So those kind of trust issues make it really hard for me to move to a technology where it has failed me and cost me reputation and money. So long story long, I don't like the trade-off where we gain the fragility of glass for a technology that I don't use. And what makes it doubly frustrating for the Duo is it doesn't even have wireless charging. So why is it all glass if we don't even get it? This thing has a weakness without any benefit. Wow, that was, that was a much longer tangent than I thought it would be. The rest of the physical construction is great. The buttons, the physical buttons are great. The hinge is insanely good. I want to reiterate this. The Duo might have the best set of hardware that I've ever seen on a mobile device. I could go on. I could go on for several paragraphs at how good the hinges are, how just how satisfying it is to hold, and how great it is to open and close. Something I missed back from the early days of cell phones was being able to end a phone call with like a satisfying shut of my flip phone. It's just so empowering. No, I'm done talking to you, flip. You get much of that here. Hey, you're done talking, flip. And something else, I don't know exactly how they did this, but when you close the Duo, it feels like it's being closed onto felt. Can you hear that? 
There is no felt around this device. I have, I have no idea how they did this. I have no idea how they did this. But this is hands down my favorite device I've ever had to close. Like I just, I love it. I love opening and closing this thing. It's not all perfect though. There are three dings that I would give them from a hardware standpoint. First off, I don't really like the bezels. Yes, go ahead and say it. The hat that I'm currently wearing is my hypocrisy hat. I've given the iPhone SE and the new iMax a pretty big pass on bezels. But the Duo, it's just the way that this is set up, it's almost screaming. It's like it's screaming to have bigger screen and more real estate around it. I, I don't know. The bezels here bother me more than they bother me on the iPhone. And sure, call me a hypocrite for that. The second hardware thing is the camera. And no, we haven't mentioned it yet, but you might've seen from all the product B-roll, there isn't a rear facing camera here. Well, I, which I will admit is a pretty sleek way for the Microsoft engineers to get around the whole people hate camera bumps on the back of their device problems but the execution is good and kind of wonky at the same time. The camera itself has an 11 megapixel sensor running at an f2.0 aperture. That's pretty low when compared against the iPhone SE and it's very low when compared against the Google Pixel 4a. Plus, if you wanna take a picture of something, and yes, we're talking about software quickly, but it's, this is not the software section. You have to do this like fold thing where you set the camera to go and then you have to tap on the screen and you get the camera display back here while the camera's in front of you and it's, it's just not a good look. I do not like how that is to work. And then if you wanna take like a selfie, it's even harder to take a selfie like this. It's just, it's frustrating. But I did say this camera has a good thing. I do really like how the front facing camera works for things like virtual meetings, which honestly is what it's there for. You do get a lot of options from either being in portrait mode, maybe in a stand or some kind of bookish mode like this, or you could have it in landscape and use the second screen, the bottom screen as a base. And it's this second screen as a base mode that I actually really like. So without anything else, without a single other accessory, you can pop this device down and have a legit conference. You don't need to buy a stand and you don't need to like handhold it. You don't need to prop it up against something. It just, it just works. You can set it in so many different ways while still having functionality of both screens. Now it's not the widest field of view compared to something like the wide angle selfie camera on the iPhone 11, but for a business type meeting, I think it's basically a perfect camera angle. And the third hardware ding is less of a ding and more like a deal breaking crack, like a deal breaking gong is what we'll call it. I can't believe this is so bad and it's the speakers. I'm sorry, the speaker on the Duo is awful, awful the absolute worst speaker I've ever heard on a main brand electronic device. Now I'm not an audiophile, so it doesn't really take that much to impress me when it comes to audio, but this is a bridge too far. It's, it's real bad. Super tinny, no bass, no clarity, just awful stuff awful stuff. And if you use the speaker on your phone for any sort of like content consumption, like if you need that quality to be good, do not buy this device. Now let's quickly mention today's sponsor, Audible. Audible is the number one provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks. Why I am telling you this, one, yes, they are the sponsor of today's video, but more importantly, as we're all learning to adapt to our new roles working from home, I find that it's getting harder and harder to actually have time to sit down and read. Being able to listen to an audiobook frees you up to jointly do tasks. I'm a big fan of multitasking. For example, I've started listening to my favorite sci-fi stories while I'm out jogging. Recently, I finished Armor by John Stakely. And because of that convenience, I'm able to get back into my weekly quasi reading rhythm again. Go ahead and click on the link in the description below to go to audible.com slash everydaydad, or you could text everydaydad to 500, 500 Get started with your own adventure venture today. Thus far, I mean, besides the speakers, this has actually been a pretty positive video for the Surface Duo, but it's time to get into some of the harder concerns. So let's now talk about software because there are some pretty big problems from that perspective. Like we said earlier, the Duo is running Android 10. And while I'm not the biggest fan of Android, I don't really think the problems are Android's fault. I don't know that I've said that very often in my life, but you can quote me. It's not Android's fault. For starters, you can have two separate apps up in the two separate screens at the same time, kind of like how Apple does it with the iPad, except actually two physically separate screens. You can switch an app from screen to screen by pressing, holding it up just a little bit and moving it. And this works most of the time, or you can press and hold and set the app in the middle to have it take up both displays. When talking about the biggest problems of the Duo, 
that like full display thing, that's where there be monsters. Most apps that I've used so far are not optimized to have a big gap in the middle of them. The main exceptions being book apps, which honestly we're waiting for a device like this to be made, and the included Microsoft suite. Outlook, Teams, and the rest of the gang, they all handle this gap really well. And it's this part where the software shines the brightest. Using the included Microsoft software really lets you get an appreciation for how good this device can be. But the root cause of most of my issues with the Duo come from the fact that at the end of the day, the background service Android doesn't know that it's running a device with two screens. It thinks that it's either running a device with one big screen or it's running two separate displays. Not one device running one display that could handle two things at once. And as much as I dislike Android, and as much as I like Windows, I wish I could blame all of the problem on Android, but I can't though. The Microsoft team in choosing Android as their operating system, they're trying to fit a square peg in a round hole here. Maybe it will work better as they release more updates, but I'm kind of skeptical. Okay, so we've talked hardware and we've talked software. So is there actually a use case? Could somebody unironically buy this and actually use this for productivity? Yes, absolutely. And the more I use the Duo, the more I'm actually enjoying it. The thing you have to accept about the Duo is that it's in this weird space where you have to approach it less as a phone hybrid and more as like a mini computer that happens to be running a phone operating system. I, I know that sounds weird, but you have to change your orientation in your brain on what the device actually is. So you have to segment this into what I've been considering phone mode and work mode. Phone mode is when I have it in the screen folded back on itself and I use the Duo as a single screened device. It's fast enough that I can get my tweets out, I can browse the internet, I can send a few emails, the base keyboard is terrible and my enjoyment of the device went way through the roof once I installed Gboard, but this works pretty darn well as like a big squat phone. I actually like the wider display as opposed to how thin phone displays have been getting recently. Video playback is fine and honestly it's a phone. I don't need it to do much besides tweet out my hot takes and let me sit in a conference or two. And when it comes to conference calls, that works perfectly fine. The audio, again, the speakers aren't great, but it works perfectly fine. Work mode, though, is where it gets interesting for me. That's where I set the device into either a stand or I use the second screen as the base mode, and then I will pair a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse to the Duo. And this works phenomenally well. I mean, it works so good. Consider this. Consider this when you talk about like what kind of tech that I that Gary carries around. Normally, I've got my iPhone with me, and I've got my iPad, and my iPad is always covered in the Magic Keyboard. So it's still like, that's not a kit that takes up much space, but sometimes I regret needing two devices all of the time. This covers both, with the added benefit of dual, of actual physical dual screens. When I'm working like normally, I like either having dual screens, or in the case of my actual production computer, like what I use for these videos, I have an ultra wide so I can have everything open in front of me at once. For example, when I'm responding to emails, I like having my calendar open right next to it so I don't double book myself. Uh, okay, I don't like double booking myself as much as I normally do because I double book myself so much. I double book myself so much, I really gotta get better at that. I also like having my research open when I'm typing these scripts and I hate going back and forth between hidden tabs to make that happen. It's just, it's very, very useful to have two monitors at the same time when I'm trying to work. That's why I like Sidecar so much with my iPad and MacBook. And that's where the Duo shines. Getting work done with a couple key accessories basically turns this into a tiny computer so long as you're using the Microsoft software. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Should you buy the Microsoft Duo? No. No, you should not buy this device. I really, and that's not to say that I don't like it. I really like this. And in this week, it's made a very strong argument that this should be my single mobile device. Like this should be the only thing I carry around with me. But the price, I cannot get around the price. For $1,400, you could get a MacBook Pro. For $1,400, you could get an iPhone SE, an iPad Pro, and the Magic Keyboard. Okay, that's together, that's $1,500. But $100 more, you could get all of that instead of this. For $1,400, you could hire somebody each month to manage your emails and do all this productivity for you. It's just, the cost is too much, especially for a device that has the software problems that this one does. If Microsoft were to drop the price below 1,000, I'd probably consider recommending this, and if it drops to around $899, I think this is a winner. I think this would be a productivity winner if it was under $900. But for $1,400, I'm 
I do not recommend the Surface Duo, no matter how much I actually personally like it. And if you like this video, but you're looking for something cheaper when it comes to phones, you should check out my iPhone SE playlist. And you can find that by clicking right here on the Duo. Click on the Duo to go to the iPhone SE. We're, we're deep here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.